Meat City, baby. Hello and welcome back to Meat City Gaming. JD here with another video in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And today is the day Luke Skywalker Hero's Journey has returned. For those of you that missed Commander Luke the first time around, this is his second appearance. I know I've been ready for a long time and I hope a lot of you guys are ready as well because Commander Luke is still, in my opinion, seems to be the best character in the game, even though I haven't had my hands on him yet, just from everything I've seen and heard and watched my guildmates do and seen on other YouTube videos, Commander Luke is a beast. So he's back and I'm excited to get my hands on him. What I'm doing today in this video is I'm going to walk through the entire event, all of the phases to unlock Commander Luke, and I'm going to do it with a squad that is entirely gear eight. So. If you want to know if it's possible to do this, how high do you need to gear your team? I have left my guys at gear 8 for a while now uh, in anticipation of doing this video. Poor R2, he is he's a good character to gear up and I'm ready to do it. But I wanted to get this video together when Commander Luke returned to see if it was possible to complete this hero's journey with a complete gear 8 squad. So at the end of the video, I'll show all of the characters in detail. They have... A good number of their Omegas, but certainly not all of them. No Zetas on this team. They're all level 85. They're all gear 8 with no extra gear pieces on them, I think. I don't think any of them have any of the gear 8 pieces. They're just straight gear 8. So, we're going to kind of walk through the event. A number of the tiers are very straightforward, including this first one. It is pretty easy to beat with the team that I have, and you can kind of just roll through it. Not too much in terms of strategy. You need to use uh, regular Luke, Farm Boy Luke, and I'll just refer to him as Luke for this entire event because we're trying to unlock Commander Luke. So you use Luke, Old Ben, and R2-D2. And the only trick for Tusken Raiders for me is you want to take out the regular Tusken Raider first, in my opinion, because they can do so much damage. They have a call to assist. And if there's more than one of those guys up, I think the second wave had a couple of them, they can do a lot of damage really quickly if two or three of them all do their assist attack. That's going to be six attacks coming at you instead of just three, so watch out for that. But other than that, pretty straightforward. If you've got gear eight tunes, then you'll uh, you'll breeze through this without too much trouble, and you'll make it on to the, the second phase. So for tier two, you can see that we again use the same three characters. And the trick here is that there is a Stormtrooper Commando who will call reinforcements as long as he is alive. And when we get into the battle, you'll see exactly how that works. We're using the same team, Luke, R2-D2, and Old Ben. And this time, there's only one wave. Uh, as you can see, I'm using Old Ben. I've only got his leadership up to level one. So you could use a different leader if you want. Uh, Luke has a leadership as well, although it just grants tenacity. So just one wave here, which is great. I start off with R2-D2's uh, burn attack, and you can see as soon as the um, extra Stormtroopers went down, they immediately came back. The Stormtrooper Commander, the Sand Trooper Captain, didn't resummon them. They just reappeared as soon as they died. So, killing them is a complete waste of time. Just focus on the Captain. They don't hit very hard, and the Captain doesn't have that much health. So you can take them out quickly, and now that they're down, you can pick off the uh, the Recon Troopers here, or the Sand Troopers here, one by one, and it won't be much trouble. So, ignore the ads, take down the boss, and then clean up, and you'll have no trouble. Again, a single wave here, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Okay, now we're starting Wave 3, or Tier 3, and this one is a little bit more challenging. It is uh, Luke and Han, and I think Han is the better choice for leader here. He gives you offense and defense depending on how much health you have. And this was a tougher one. It took me maybe five or six tries to get through this one without, uh, without dying because you have to go through two waves. Each of the waves has a ton of enemies and there's taunts, so the stormtroopers will taunt and block access to the other characters who do more damage. The Imperial Officer here in this first wave moves really quickly. He gets two or three turns in a row sometimes, so he is a really dangerous character, but he has a ton of health, so he's hard to burn down. So what I would recommend doing, the, the scout in the back there is pretty easy to take care of, so get them down as quickly as you can. If you have a taunt come up, you can use Luke's special attack to uh, 
either stun the taunt or remove the taunt, and then you can kind of work on some of the other characters. The uh, Snow Trooper on the right there, another character that has an AoE, so can do m massive damage quickly. He can damage both characters quickly, and you want to take as little damage as possible going into the final wave here. It's a little bit RNG. Can you stun the Imperial Officer? How many attacks does he get off? Does the damage all get focused on one of your characters? How much of the turn meter is Han removing? Uh, potency on your Stormtrooper Han is a good thing because he uh, removes or has a chance to remove turn meter from the enemies when he comes up, which of course is important. And then hopefully you make it to the second wave with, uh, with enough health to get through it. Here we've got a Stormtrooper Commander and he's a healer. So you really want to take the, the Stormtrooper Commander down as quickly as possible because every time he heals, he's erasing your damage and there's no way for you to heal in this fight. So again, there's there's going to be taunts that pop up. The commander does have a bit of health. You might need to get a lucky stun or two or a lucky crit because in one of my runs, I got the commander down to 10% health, just missed my shot, and he healed himself almost up to full and I got wiped out. So a little bit of RNG here. Uh, I think you should focus the commander first. But if you have a taunt, you may have to deal with it. And if you can do the, if you can do that, deal with the commander first. Then there's one or two of those scout troopers again. You can take them out quickly because they're fragile. And then if it's just the the magma trooper or the regular storm trooper that are left, their damage isn't very high, and you'll be able to whittle the storm and take them out. But don't get frustrated here. Play a little bit with the RNG. Learn the attacks. Figure out when you need to use Luke's stun. When you need the crit to hit. And, and make sure you carry over your cooldowns into that second phase, and you'll get through it. The first time I did it, I got blown out, and I thought, wow, there's no way I can use just those two characters to get through it. But you can be patient, figure out the fight a little bit. You saw from my what I did there how it can work, and you'll get through it too. So now for, uh, for the next tier, we have just Luke and Leia, and it looks intimidating when you get into the battle here. Eight waves... But this is actually pretty easy. There's only two enemies, I think, on every wave except for maybe the last one. Uh, pretty straightforward. Use your attacks when you can. I was saving my specials because I didn't know what was coming. This was actually my first run through this tier. So there were times I could have used Luke's special. I could have used Leia's stealth. And I decided I was going to save them if I only saw two troopers here because the next phase, 3, 4, might have a more difficult wave and I would want to have those cooldowns ready. So you can use them whenever you want uh, early on because the next waves aren't any harder than the one you're dealing with. Again, this is about dealing damage as quickly as possible, taking as little damage as possible, uh, and if you have to take damage, you want it spread out. So don't necessarily stealth Leia because then Luke's going to be taking all the hits and you don't want that. You want both characters to be healthy and alive when you get to the end. Uh, so there is a scout trooper here in wave four. He does have speed up and he does have quite a bit of health. But again, it's not that big a deal. Uh, note when he puts the target lock debuff on, it prevents stealth. So be aware of that. Uh, and then all you need to do is burn this guy down. You can stun him with Luke and take him out. If Leia, one of the big RNG factors for this whole entire event, is Leia's multi-attack. She attacks once on her basic with a chance to attack again and a chance to attack a third time. And whether she attacks once or three times is going to be a big deal for some of the battles. Not so much for this one though. Like I said, pretty straightforward. You can get through it. Uh, just use your abilities smartly. Don't get extremely unlucky. If every shot from every stormtrooper hits one of your characters, you might lose them early on and have to restart. But Again, I didn't have any trouble with this, thought it was pretty straightforward, and so you should uh, probably not have any trouble as well using characters similarly ge geared to mine. So here we are, wave 7, the second to last wave, just a snow trooper, a snow trooper and a storm trooper. Again, take the snow trooper out first, he has the AoE attack, storm troopers don't hit very hard, and we get ourselves to the final wave. And again, there's a commander here, so a healer along with a recon and a regular stormtrooper. So uh, because there's only three of them and the recon health was kind of low, I thought maybe I could take him out first. Looked like it wasn't able to do so. I only got a single attack from Leia, so then I stunned the commander. Taunt came up, so I had to deal with it. But again, we're at almost full health. We've lost our protection. We can outgun these three guys. 
uh, with these characters. So not a big deal. Now we can control the uh, the commander. He's a healer, not a DPS. So we have enough to get through here. We can stun. We could stealth if we want to get some uh, some extra damage in. But at the end of the day, not too bad. And we complete that. And we're moving on to the next tier. Note, each of these tiers does have a nice little reward. You obviously get the Commander Luke Shards, which are useless until you finish all the tiers. You get a nice chunk of crystals. 50 crystals is great. And also an increasing amount of credits. 400k for that one. Uh, I think it started at... 100 and went two, three, four. So uh, you get some nice credits here as well, which you'll want to save. Hopefully you've been saving your gear and your credits to get Commander Luke leveled up as quickly as possible. He is a game changer. Okay, so spoiler alert, if you are at all interested in a cool cinematic, a cool encounter, skip this one. Uh, wait until you don't see this in the video, mute the sound or kind of jump ahead by about a minute. Uh, there's a cool interaction here, and you may not want it spoiled, but it's this very interesting fight uh, between Darth Vader and Old Ben. It's when their encounter on the Death Star happens, and Ben Kenobi decides to kind of sacrifice himself to let everyone get away. So you get this cool view, you have these unique abilities, and because this is a walkthrough, I'm going to tell you how to do it. So again, this is a slight spoiler if, if you're concerned about those kind of things. But notice there is an ability, uh, a new special ability on the far right there for Old Ben. And that is the win condition for this fight. You don't need to, and I don't think you can, defeat Darth Vader. You just need to use the sacrifice ability. So this is all about staying alive until the cooldown on that ability comes down and you can activate it. So uh, we did get ability blocked. So note that that is a possibility you can get ability blocked. But we survive. Used ability block on our own to delay some turn, healed when we could. You use that ability, and of course, Ben sacrifices himself, and you get this kind of cool cinematic scene. I, I thought that was a really nice touch for the uh, hero's journey. So, an easy one to complete, as long as you've got a somewhat tanky Ben Kenobi. If you're under geared for him, uh, put some mods on that increase his uh, health and protection, and you should be fine. So that brings us to the final tier, tier six. This is the last one. You use Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Stormtrooper Han, and R2-D2. They must all be at seven stars. And if you complete it, you will unlock Commander Luke Skywalker. This one is tough with the team geared to just gear level eight. Um, I did increase, I did a couple of the earlier tiers without some of the additional Omegas that I added. Again, detailed view of the characters, what I ended up with, uh, that I needed to get through this final battle. This is the tough one. Three waves. It's basically all stormtroopers and officers. And, uh, and it is a, a slugfest because you're going to take damage. And it probably took me 10 tries, give or take, to get through it. So what you want to do is not have Han take damage early. Don't use Han's taunt in the first wave or two because he's just going to get damage piled on and he's going to be gone by the time you get to the third phase. You want him there to soak up damage at the beginning of the third phase if you can. So I use R2's smoke screen on himself. He's got a, a little bit of protection here for me. He, he gets evasion so he can take at least one hit for free. And then after the smoke screen goes down, now the damage again we want to be spread around. R2-D2 has a stun on his basic. Commander Luke has a stun on his special. Use them to control the damage dealers. Again, the recon troopers or the, the sand troopers, anything that has an AOE attack, snow troopers, you want to either stun or take out first because anything that hits everybody is taking a big chunk of your hit points down. And again, if you use Leia here and her first three attacks only go for a single attack, you may have to restart, right? That's just part of the RNG when you're trying to do things at a minimum level, uh, a minimum gear investment. RNG is going to play a factor, and it does here as well. But strategy does too. So we get lucky. Potency on R2-D2, of course, is a good thing for that stun to stick. Luke gets a stun off on the second character, and so now this is great. Every time that they're stunned is a turn that they'll go without dealing damage, which, of course, is important. We want to get to that last wave with as much health across our entire team as possible. So if you have a bad start, you know, feel free to restart. Don't waste the time going into waves two and three. 
if your Han is down to 10% health in wave two. This is not gonna happen. So we, again, we're spreading around the stuns, spreading around the damage, trying to control, spreading the damage around on our characters. We don't want anybody taking too much, but now that I know I have the fight under control, I also don't want to burn any of my cooldowns heading into the final wave here. I want to have everything ready to go. So here we are in the final encounter, and you can see two pre-taunting stormtroopers along with a scout in the back and uh, and then a commander in the middle who can heal, and I think it's either a recon or a sand trooper, the one who throws the grenade, also in the middle. I start with Luke's special. The stormtroopers that are taunting also have crit immunity, so you can't stun them, but you're guaranteed to remove the taunt from one with Luke's special. So we remove one taunt, he actually does taunt again, and you can see here we then use R2-D2's smoke screen on Han Solo. Every time he gets hit, it feeds our team turn meter. We want to be going as fast as possible, so because now he has health, he can taunt, and every time he's getting hit, we're gaining turn meter, so we can try and gain an advantage. Boom, one of the stormtroopers goes down, we focus fire, got a couple multi-hits from Leia, and we're in good shape. Getting burning out on R2 is the second priority after the smoke screen. It is a nice uh, damage over time effect, and any subsequent hits from R2's basic do bonus damage to burning targets, so very important. With the smoke screen up, you want to use uh, Leia's stealth when she's stealthed from R2. It'll give her some bonus buffs, including, I think, offense up, and she's going to hit harder. She's the main damage dealer that we have on a consistent basis. Luke can have some big crits every now and then, but Leia's multi-attack is the key here. So, again, we get some nice damage. Focus on the second tank, and it's down. And now we've got a three-on-three -three fight, and an interesting choice here on what to do. Again, the the recon stormtrooper has the AoE, so I decide to go for him first, but the other choice might be the healer, depending on how much burst you have, what specials you have up. So we don't want to get the recon down to 25% and then let the commander heal him. So we're going to see how this goes. We get a stun in. Luke is very, very badly hurt, but R2's smoke screen is back up. So now, again, a, uh, an area attack would kill Luke, but the recon just used it. So we're probably okay. We get a double attack from Leia. Luke gets a big crit for 8,000. Burning attack should just about do it. He has a little bit of health left, but the dot was enough to take him out. And now I think we have things under control. At this point, I'm just gonna focus on the commander because the recon, I don't, the, the, the last scout trooper there, I don't think has an AOE and he has a debuff attack that doesn't do any damage. So. We get the healer out of the way. Now we can focus on the scout trooper. Three on one. We're in good shape. And this is when you start to feel it. The adrenaline's pumping. You know that Commander Luke is coming. He's going to be added to your lineup here. And all you've got to do is clean it up. So this is my celebratory pause. And boom, a big crit. Luke must have known he was about to graduate and went out with a bang there. Almost 9,000 on that crit to finish off the last scout trooper. And that's it. That is tier six. That's the last tier of the event. That is how you unlock Commander Luke Skywalker. And if you're able to do it, enjoy. I hope you have the stuff saved up, as I said before. Only 100 credits to unlock a seven-star character. Hey, that's pretty awesome. Usually, it's a million credits just to do that final seven-star upgrade. So really great. After all that time and investment and work and stress, you get him, you unlock him, just 100 credits to get him to seven stars. And then I certainly went right away and put a bunch of gear on him and got him ready and uh, and started figuring out how to add him to my arena team and how to do the tank and, uh, and the Rancor using him. He's great in everything. So we also get three little achievements for completing this, some additional crystals and, uh, and credits. Nice bonus. Again, all that can go towards getting your Commander Luke geared up and leveled up and ready to go. Uh, so, an awesome event, an awesome character. Definitely doable at gear 8 with these characters. And there is definitely some room there to do it at a little less. Kenobi, you could probably get away uh, with not being at gear 8 if you have some tanky mods on him. Because all he has to do is survive. Or some speedy mods on him. Because all he has to do is get his turn... Uh, his turns going to, to unlock that last cooldown. Um, Luke is is a decent character. Most people have R2 and use them. So if you have R2 way up, if you have him at, at gear 10 and he's super fast and going all the time and stunning and AoEing, 
then you know your other characters might not need to be at gear eight either. So this is a guide. You may be able to do it more efficiently. You may already have some gear in there, but you certainly don't need all the Omegas. You don't need all the leaderships all the way up. Um, you can see what I did here to, to complete this. I'm going to let the characters roll through, and hopefully this gives you an idea of what you need to be able to complete this event. Good luck. I hope you're ready for it. If not, get ready for next time. It's probably going to be a couple months, but you know these are the characters you need. These are the gear level and the, the character level that you need to have them at. So get ready because if you miss them this time, you will want them for next time. So if this video helped you guys out, I hope it did. Please feel free to leave a comment. Let me know if you got Commander Luke or if you're going to miss him this time. Let me know if the video helped you out at all. What gear level were you able to complete this at? Did you Were you able to beat me and do it at even a lower level than I was? Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. And as always, you can stay tuned to Meet City Gaming for future Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes content. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time.